Okay, welcome everyone. So in the previous video, we discussed what is a system of linear equations and what is a solution to a system of differential equations, what types of solutions might be possible. So in particular, uh, we walked through solving this system of two linear equations of x1 and x2. So the good news is given any system, no matter how large it is, there is always a systematic way to solve that system if this solution exists. Um, and what we did with this one in the previous video was we used elimination. So we kind of replaced the second equation um, using the top equation. So uh, the bad news with this process, especially as you add more and more equations, is that it can involve lots of algebraic steps and as we all know, it is very easy to make a kind of careless error when you're working through um, problems that involve very, very many algebraic steps. So uh, the good news here is we can use matrices to help organize our work and therefore help us avoid making these more careless types of errors. So a matrix is just a rectangular array of numbers. So here we have this system, and in red, I've highlighted the coefficients in front of x1 and x2. And on the right side, in blue, we have these constants um, that are corresponding to the right side of the equation. So we can take all of the coefficients from the left side of the equation and construct a matrix, what we'll call the coefficient, coefficient matrix. And the way that we order things here is very important. So the top row of this matrix corresponds to the top equation. And first, we put the entry for x1. And second, we put the coefficient in front of x2, including the negative sign here. And we do the same with the second equation. And so one thing to just be aware of is sometimes when we write out the equations, we might write the x2 term before the x1 term. But when we set up the matrix, we want to make sure that this first column is corresponding to the coefficients of x1. And this second column is corresponding to the coefficients of x2. So this is what we would call the coefficient matrix. When we're solving these systems of equations, of course, we want to know what's going on with the right side. So we can include that information in the matrix by adding a third column which consists of the uh, right, the constants on the right side of each of the equations. So now uh, we call this the augmented matrix. So that consists of the coefficient matrix, and then we add an additional column on the end, which corresponds to the constants on the right side of the equation. So let's take a look at a system. Now we have a system of three linear equations in x1, x2, x3, and x4. And let's construct the augmented matrix for this system. So the first column is going to consist of all of the coefficients that are in front of each of the x1 terms. And so we can see those, that first column therefore should be an eight, a two, and a 0 0.5. And then for the next column, we would have the seven. We wanna make sure we include the minus six and we want to make sure that we include the negative with the 0 0.01. And that gives us the next column, which is again the 7, the minus 6, and the minus 1, uh, 0 0.01. And next column would correspond to the coefficients for x3. And here's where we want to be careful. So we have a minus 1. And over here, this minus 12, right, this corresponds to the x4 term, not the x3 term. So there actually is no x3 term in equation two. We do have a term in the last equation. So now when we set up the column corresponding to x3 coefficients, notice here we include the zero as a placeholder since that second equation did not have any x3 term in it. And Last, uh, next up would be the x4 term, so that would be the minus 5, we want to include the negative sign, the minus 12, and the minus 1.5. So that would give us column 4 in our augmented matrix, and then the very last column is going to correspond to the constants that we have on the right side. So that's going to be the 10 and the 0 and the minus 2 
And this gives us our full augmented matrix down below. Okay, so finally, let's describe some properties of this augmented matrix that we just set up on the previous slide. So in particular, what's gonna be nice to pay attention to are how many rows and how many columns are in the matrix, since that's gonna to correspond to how many equations and how many variables are in our system of linear equations. So first, let's just note that this matrix has three rows and it has five columns. So the fact that we have three rows, remember each row corresponds to a different equation in the linear system. So we must have three linear equations in this system. And the fact that we have five columns, right? We've got column one, two, three, four, and five. Be careful, this doesn't mean that our equation has five variables because this is the augmented matrix. So this last column, this corresponds to the coefficient, or excuse me, the constants that are on the right side of the equation. So we've got one variable, two variables, three variables, four variables for the first four columns, and then that fifth column corresponds to the constants on the right side. So we've got three rows and five columns. So we would say that this augmented matrix is three by five. So we read this as three by five, even though we have like the multiplication symbol in here. So the first comes the three, so first comes the rows, and then second comes the five, which is describing how many columns. And so it is very important when our matrix is not a square that we pay attention to the order. So we always put the rows first, and then we indicate how many columns are in the matrix second. So this is a three by five augmented matrix because we have three equations of four variables.